name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 You know, if you read the Gospels uh, with attention to the setting, you will see in all the Gospels that a lot of what Jesus did, especially in the first three, uh, what Jesus does is outdoors. So the story today is outdoors, and it's wonderful that we're outdoors. There, a whole lot of healing can happen outdoors. Thank you for being here for Graduate Sunday and our annual time of worship in, the, in God's nature in this beautiful setting. And maybe we'll do more than one. I don't know, but this is great to see you. If you read in Luke's Gospel, you will see uh, just before this passage that Jesus did his miraculous stilling of the terrible storm, where the disciples were freaking out, and they're saying, make it stop, make it stop, calm the waves, and of course he said, peace, be still, and the joke is, he was talking to the disciples, shut up, I've got this under control, and they were amazed that he did. And so he's just now pulling in to the shore of the Gerasenes. It's a, it's a Gentile town, just and it says in Scripture, just opposite of Galilee. And we know it's a Gentile town because the swine herds were there. The swine herds and the swine were there, and a Jewish town would not, would not have people making a living with pigs because, of course, that was forbidden by Jewish law. You don't eat pigs, and so you can't possibly make a living uh, herding pigs and raising pigs. Well, Jesus was stepping out of the boat, and he was, you can imagine he was almost mid-step getting out of the boat onto shore when suddenly this man, and it doesn't say this naked man came up to him, but you can see that in the scripture it says he didn't have any clothes. This naked man who was out of his mind comes up to him. And perfect stranger, they just arrived on shore. They had just probably been mm, seasick, and they arrive on this shore, and this crazy man leaps at Jesus. And the man was so overcome by demons that he called himself what? You remember this name? Legion. Legion. And it wasn't the American Legion. It was Legion because there were so many demons he was possessed by. He pleads with Jesus, please do something. And um, I was reading this other uh, translation, and the word was not Legion. It was mob. <laughs> they called it mobs. I, I'm mobbed by these voices and these demons. So possessed was he by all the temptations and those preoccupations in his life that had taken over. He had completely lost himself, couldn't even remember his name, and called himself Legion. Well, the demons did not like that Jesus entered their world because they knew he was on to their game, and he knew that they had taken over this man and his life and his identity. And they were scared that Jesus would remove them, so they started to negotiate with Jesus. You're Jesus, son of the most high God. Hey, don't give us a hard time. <laughs> Knowing their fate was to be expelled from this man that they had possessed for years. This man had lost his sense, lost his clothes, lost his home. He was in the tombs. He was in a cemetery living because nobody could, could deal with him. He was so possessed. But they pleaded with Jesus, we know you're going to send us out of this man. Hey, send us into those pigs over there. And so he did. But once the demons were in those pigs, they ran right off the cliff and into the water where Jesus, Jesus had just come from. And that poor swine herd, if you think about it, he had just lost instantly his living because the pigs, pigs went into water and drowned. So no wonder some of those people were afraid. No wonder that they didn't think this healing was such a good deal. No wonder they said, wait, we don't know about this. If, the, if he's going to send the demons into the swine and we're going to lose our living, we not, we're not sure that this is good news. But the possessed man had a great healing miracle to, story to tell. And he sat at Jesus' feet and begged. He, it says he sat at Jesus' feet. He was clothed and in his right mind, and he begged. He begged that, Jesus, that he go with Jesus and his disciples to tell this good news, this story. But Jesus, strangely, what did he do? He didn't say, follow me, did he? Which is weird because that's all he used to do in the Gospels, follow me. What did Jesus do with this man? He said, no, don't follow me, go home. <laughs> now that you're restored, you have a household. You have people in your home to tell this good news of God's grace to your people, your own people under your own roof. 
Folks, that's one of the first places we evangelize until the good news is in our homes. So after all, this guy was no longer required to live in the tomb or the cemetery. Now he would be able to re-enter his household. So in this case, Jesus did not say, follow me or go out into the towns and villages and tell the good news. He said, stay right here and tell your, your household about the goodness of God. And indeed, sometimes Jesus calls us back home to share the good news of healing with our own loved ones. Now, some modern and enlightened people scoff and talk of demon possession and Satan. They don't quite buy it, but I'm not one of those people. I take these forces seriously because there are way too many examples in our lifetime of people taking leave of their senses, of losing their identity to negative forces. We may call them something different, I don't know. Young men who lose themselves online and go on shooting rampages, children getting hooked on drugs in school playgrounds. And I even have to say that I suspect demon possession in many of the greedy people who who caused our financial world to collapse, remember then? And I do think that there are forces that cause people to lose themselves to addictions and greed, just to name a few. And you may remember that occasion, occasionally I preach about the first things we address with baptismal candidates in the baptismal covenant. The very first things we ask them to renounce three times, Satan and the evil forces that may influence us. And we also ask them to affirm three times that Jesus is our Savior. So those renunciations are the first promises of the baptismal candidate. And we say, yes, I renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that draw us away from God. And yes, I do turn to Christ. We, we do risk losing ourselves in those evil forces, but we always, always, always gain our identity as Christ's beloved child when we affirm Jesus and choose to live by his teachings. I ran across a story, and it, it was about Martin Luther, when he felt oppressed by the devil. And, and we all know Martin, well, we don't, we don't know Martin Luther was oppressed by the devil, but one of the things he split from the Roman church was that he thought they were possessed by the devil. But he would, whenever he felt like he was oppressed by the devil, he would take courage by shouting this, I am baptized. I am baptized. And in this way, he grounded his confidence of salvation in God's external objective act of drawing him into the Christian family through water and the work of baptism. So we're here to celebrate our community as the baptized, but also what? What are you here to? Are we here to celebrate graduates? Yes, we are. <laughs> So these are both rites of passage, baptism and graduation, and they symbolize goodness. They symbolize our identity and hope for the future. And this parish is very proud to celebrate with our graduates and present them a gift from the Grace Vestry and the Women of Grace, and we pray for you as a community. We congratulate and give thanks for these members of our baptized family who are graduating. Nathaniel Moore, Dominique Lonk, Jelani Price, Celeste Simmons, Michael Simmons Jr., Zachary McKenzie, Sheila Sarpong, Andre Colley, Jaylene Raven Garcia, Grace Woodall McQuaid, Shinea Sarpong, and Isaiah Tate. I love that you're clapping. Yes, we must clap. <laughs> there is a, a lot of hope associated with graduation. But we all know that after these important rites of passage pass, our lives tend to go back to the routine and, and the regular temptations. And, you know, like the demoniac in the story, we are easily led astray. Let me ask the graduates, think about this. What are the things that tempt you the most? What are those things that undermine your sense of well-being and trust in God? You know they are. We all know our temptations. We all know what we're most vulnerable to. Sometimes we're tempted to lie. Sometimes we're tempted to cheat. Everybody is tempted. I remember I was tempted to join the eighth grade class, the girls that I used to eat lunch with. I was in Northwest Junior High School. Eighth grade, we were 
in the cafeteria, and the cafeteria is huge because it was a really big school. Every lunch, my friends would bring their bag lunch, and in their bag they would have a small bottle of vodka. This is eighth grade! And they would go through the cafeteria line and buy a carton of orange juice. They even knew how to mix cocktails, and every day <laughs> that was their beverage. And I look back and I'm thinking, that's eighth grade. This was in 1968, folks. And I was tempted. I'm like, well, I need to fit in. I should fit in. I, I, don't, I, I don't think this is right, but I should fit in. And I never did it, but I always felt left out. And that's a good thing to feel, left out. <laughs> things we're tempted and we fall through, you know, fall through on. <laughs> we're all tempted, and I know graduates, you will encounter temptation. And I, and I love graduation speakers because they speak of hope and the future, and they encourage you, and that's what they should do. That's what this is intended to do. Always hope, always resist the temptations, and even if you give in to the temptations, you can always return to Christ because Christ's teachings is... Even the demoniac who didn't even know his name went to Christ and said, heal me. And Christ did, and you can always count on that. The one thing that we can count on is in our baptism, Christ loves us and we're joined to Christ. And I'm going to leave you with a message, all of us, with this message. And each graduate will get one of these. Do you, do you see what's on here? The frog. The frog. Okay, so last, last week I was at summer camp. <laughs> it was called Credo, and it was a bunch of priests um, my age that got together and learned about, you know, we worshiped together and learned about the Bible even more and about our vocation and about spirituality. We also learned about the frog. So the frog, it's a reminder. What? You're going to get one. If you're graduating, you're not graduating. But we're gonna, you're going to get one. So anyway, when you're tempted, there are two things really to, to remember. We could be like Martin Luther and say, I am baptized, and that works. Stop yourself and say, I am baptized. And also, bring the frog out. Fully rely on God. <laughs> I am tempted, so I'm going to bring the frog out. Fully rely on God because you are God's beloved children. We all are.